Hi there, Taurus. Welcome to your end of September 2024 general tarot update. It's Raina here. Well, this is the third time that I've laid out a few cards and they were um, reversed. And I do read reverse cards, but now when they're all like that, and I looked at the different piles and they were all reversed. Well, one was actually upright the, the last time I did it, but I, I, you know, I picked three reverse cards in a row. So um, this is... This is like, is it the third or fourth time this has happened? Weird. Okay. So here we go again. <laughs> we'll put this three. I have a ring light. Um, this is one of the first times I've used it. And it still is going to be dim because of the other lamp. It's not... You know, it is what it is. Let's let's face it. I don't like to film at night sometimes because of um, I think it just looks so much better during the day. But you know, we can uh, work around this. Okay, I'm gonna pick an additional card because of the like the the unsure nature of the two of. Okay. The two of, uh, whenever there's a two, I like to, should I leave the, oops. <laughs> oh, I had that upside down. Okay. Just so you have that, you know what the deck looks like. The heart of the matter is the five of cups. This is a card of mourning the loss of something. The person has three cups. The liquid that is in that cup is spilling all over the place so there's a loss cups relate to the emotion so it can be about emotional loss um grieving the loss of a situation where love was involved but there are two cups upright behind him and the common interpretation is that he's turning his back on that because he's so focused on his loss you know, um, the glass half empty. So there could be like um, sometimes a um, pessimism that has taken over. And we do have the death card. So it is possible that there is a physical death, but this is something that would have, that you would have already been dealing with. This is not in the future. So if it's not something that you're dealing with now, then it's not relevant to this particular reading. And um, I'm going to look at the past position. Oh, this might be work related actually because we have here in the past position the 4 of pentacles and this is a card of financial security. So the person may be thinking about a time when this was a thing for them and now they feel like they don't have it like that's what the loss is. So looking at the lunar eclipse that just transpired that was in Pisces. That was in Taurus's 11th house of gains, actually. So that may have actually blown up some people's um, finances who have a Taurus sun or ascendant. But it's also possible that for some people, that was eclipsed out of their life, this... Um, type of, uh, it's not that, you know, I shouldn't, probably that's not very accurate because the second house, this is the, the 11th house is about profits. Maybe it, it would indicate that the, there is something that is leave that has left some Torians lives. But, um, I'm wondering too about the solar eclipse that as I record this has not yet arrived, but could still be activated. I mean, could be already in motion for you because Libra is your sixth house of work and a solar eclipse, this is tied to the South node. It's forming a conjunction with the South node. So something that you are having to let go of, you might have to let go of something to receive something new. 
So it's not like the typical new moon or even the typical solar eclipse. This one involves the south node. And the reason that this is significant is because it almost um, reminds me of a full moon or a lunar eclipse, which can sometimes take something out of your life. So you may have already experienced this and you are feeling a sense of mourning. Now, um, I'm going to read this card. This is the challenge card. And this is your card, Knight of Pentacles, Taurus. Knight of Pentacles can be somebody who's a workhorse, meaning that they are, they're a stud when it comes to work. Uh, wash, rinse, repeat, get up, you know, they got that down. But you know what? Taurus is a fixed, fixed earth sign, and you may be so in that rut that you're not experiencing growth. You're just like kind of maintaining that comfort level. And, and that comfort zone, you're just kind of like restocking your comfort zone instead of, you know, maybe putting yourself into different situations that may offer you more growth in the long term, albeit in the short term, they can feel a bit more iffy. They can feel like unknown. And so you may be like, oh, I don't know. I don't want to do this or I don't want to do that. So just keep that in mind because that could be contributing to your situation. Now, if this is um, having to do with a relationship, it's possible that workaholism contributed to the uh, demise of the relationship. And maybe it's it wasn't a full-blown relationship. Maybe it was simply that you were dating someone and you could never take it to the next level because you never had that deep connection. But that's why if somebody is looking for a life partner, they have to put in the time for that. They can't just um, expect that showing up once in a while is going to cut it. You know, this is something that's supposed to be for life. So you have to make sure you're with the right person anyway to begin with. You know, all of those things matter. The higher message is a strength card. What immediately came to my mind is what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. You know, that's kind of one of those phrases that people mindlessly, you know, parrot. And it's a cliche by now. Um, but do people really believe that? Uh, it, and is it even true? Is it even true that if you survive something that you're actually stronger? I don't necessarily think so. I think that I think that it can actually weaken people if they are not um, interpreting a loss in the right way. You know, if somebody that you love dies and it just the grief consumes you and kind of blinds you to the blessings you have, that's not an example of somebody who has learned how to put death in its proper perspective, obviously. It's it's actually consuming him or her. But I think that the strength card is saying, is kind of giving you that validation that you've got this. That you're, whatever you're dealing with that feels very challenging at the moment, and maybe in some cases may be um, threatening to que make you question your own worth, is that you have grown, whether you know it or not, and it's been internally. So you may not be feeling this kind of a smugness about it where you just want to like kind of act all cool. You, you may still have that humility because you know that the struggle was real for you and that it took everything that you had to get to this point. So you're just, you're not going to rest on your laurels. You're going to just keep persevering. Um, what's coming in is a death card. This is like transformation big time. And of course we do have that, that I'm, I'm going to, um, all, oh yeah, that's important because we do have in October at the beginning, we have that, that uh, solar eclipse. So that could be, 
that could be like the coup de gras, so to speak, meaning that there might have been something earlier that began this change process for you. And if you have been reacting emotionally, the death card could be really hitting at home. Um, and if you are freaking out about change, that's going to hamper your experience with this. You have to be receptive to change. You may not be initiating the change, but at the very least that you're able to allow it to happen with grace and not be like, oh no, I can't do this. You can do this if you choose to do it. And, and also seeing where something is ending for you and not, you know, allowing yourself to, to be consumed with grief, grief about it. The outcome is the two of swords. This can be some kind of loggerheads that you're having. Uh, yes, it could be with another person, but I also think it could be that you're of two minds. You Taurus people, some of you Taurus people have Mercury and Gemini and you're like, yeah, of course I'm of two minds. I'm Mercury and Gemini, but also, um, it could be with, um, I think that, I think it's probably within yourself. Um, as I recall thinking of the books that I've read on, on the tarot, but you see that the person has bl a blindfold. So there's obviously something that they're refusing to see in their situation and that could be hampering their ability to make a really informed decision. And so it could be like a bit of denial over something. So if this is relationship related and um, you feel like something was really solid and then it became anything but... Um, you know, sometimes people don't see the signs that things are changing within the relationship and, um, the two of swords suggests that you still have that relationship there. Uh, maybe there's a Leo person involved. The strength card could be Leo. And you're, and, and actually that would be symbolic of somebody who's more of a fire sign. The other fire signs are Aries, uh, and, um, Sagittarius, or they have the, that kind of fiery, those placements in their, their chart. And it's like the question between passion versus the security that the, or even the materialism. And I picked an additional card. Six of uh, cups. This is soulmate energy and it's cups. So it could be like a, a Scorpio. But it's like a dual meaning because the death card can mean that your current relationship is not viable or, you know, you've been through too much. And actually this is saying that you have become much stronger maybe than you even realize. And that is helping you to, um, feel confident about these changes, even if it's hard. So anyway, that's what I have for you, Taurus. I hope that this resonated. If you would like a private reading, I'm primarily an astrologer. So I'm promoting my, uh, package deal called my deep dive reading, which is an hour of natal chart analysis and an hour of transits through the end of 2025 for a special price. You can find out more information at the link below. Thanks for watching. Bye.